are next. Alan, hello? Hey, Bart. Thanks for having me on. How's it going? Have you called into the show before, Alan? I, can't I, I called in about a year ago, I think. Maybe it's two years ago. I don't know. Oh, okay. No well, okay. time before. Okay. I mean, I do remember talking to Alan quite a bit when I lived in Austin. I don't know if we ever met each other, but Alan, you still frequent that little club up in uh, Georgetown? That's, up there? that's where this uh, call comes from. Oh, okay. That club's still going on? It's still St- going on. It's still, still going strong. Still happening? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people don't realize that there's so many poker clubs, um, especially in the Austin area. It's really sort sort of like oversaturated, and a lot of times it's easier said than done. I mean, I think that Doug Polk and those guys did it the right way where they sort of kind of merged with the largest existing club as opposed to trying to like start their own. I, I just – I see so many of these places just come and go. It's just kind of crazy. Yeah, there's always, there's always one that I've never heard of and – Hear someone pop up. There's a new club. So yeah, uh, yeah. This one's been going on for I think three about about three years. So uh, yeah, okay. there's a good good Thursday night round and round game that I play in. And they they still t- they sometimes do a live stream too, or is that they, pretty much they've done? been doing a live stream? Um, they they've upgraded a lot of stuff. I think they're trying to focus mostly on hold'em because they're yeah. doing a lot of the um, the round and round game. But the Omaha makes it really hard to 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 scan things in and and to also to commentate. So just okay. keep it simple. Okay, so what's the si- game uh, game size here? So this is uh, we're playing it as a two five this week. Um, it was a slightly bigger game than it normally is. A um, couple of out of town guests. With, that's a big game. In, that's a big game in Texas. Two five. That can be like the equivalent of ten twenty if it's like yeah. match the stack, right? I mean, we had twenty k on the table yeah. by the end of the night, so it was yeah. it was getting you know not the biggest game, but um, bigger than it normally is in that room. Sure. Okay. Uh, so this is a hold'em hand. Uh, uh-huh. I'm I'm in the small blind, and I have jack five of diamonds. Oh, so how deep uh, are you guys, by the way? Uh, I have about nine hundred. All right, so nine hundred effective, and this is round by round. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay, so, so it's like half PLO and half hold'em, right? That's right, with right. Uh, bomb pots mixed in there. So. Half PLO, half no limit. This is round by round, and hero is uh, in the small blind with jack five of diamonds. Okay, that's right. Um, so if it, first player limps uh, in pretty early position. I don't even remember who it was, but someone limps. Um, there's another player at the table that st- stacked me earlier, flush over flush. He's got a huge stack. He's been running hot, stacking everyone. Um, that's pretty aggressive normally, and he just limps uh, in the cutoff. So that was kind of a strange play. I, I noticed right off the bat, I would expect him to be raising there a lot. Um, just open almost, limps. Open limps the cutoff. Uh, he Someone else had limped before him, okay. and then he open limps. Okay. Or he limps over the top, sorry. Okay. Yep. So I'm in this small blind. Um, the big blind has an older lady who's generally pretty passive. Um, so I figure I'm going to get to see a free flop. I call um, the three extra dollars, and she pops it to 20. So Interesting. So big blind raises to 20, which is very small after three people limp, right? Yeah. It was, I mean, I would say it's not – her sizings are certainly um, – different uh sometimes so i don't read too much into it sometimes okay. she'll she'll open raise for like 8x and sometimes it's small raises so it's it's hard to tell what exactly um the sizing will be um the first limper folds mm-hmm. and then the cutoff flat calls and i probably should fold here but uh, it was two players I wanted to play against, so I, I made the call. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely fold here. <laughs> I, I I would definitely fold here now. You're out of position. I mean, obviously, you can't get squeezed. And, you know, it's it's the pot's probably, what, like maybe 55 and it's 15 for you to call. I just don't think this hand is all that good. It, 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 it's interesting to note, though, too, the completing range. I, I had texted Squish My Tomato, Mark Goon, about this because – and then I had asked our buddy Nate about what is just a completing range for these guys on the small blind and limped pots because I do a, a fair amount of completing when I'm getting a price in the small blind. It, it, there's only two limps, so I might – it's probably pretty close because there's no rake in Texas, and it's it's three bucks. But I think people, when they say, oh, I fold like king 10 off when four people have limped in and you're in the small blind for a half bet, I don't know how you fold that. Usually I complete with any two in the small blind that are suited after having – some odds but coming back around here though i think you probably should fold but it it brings up an interesting situation because it's sort of a semi kind of uh limp limp dish pot and it's like 65 right to the flop yeah and she is capable of kind of seeing weakness and using her kind of image against people um thinking she's only going to be doing it with 
the goods. So I, it was it was a really borderline call at the, at the time. Yeah, I, I really liked who was in the pot, so that kind of made me uh, want to stick around. Okay, so what's the flop? So the flop is a five of clubs, ten of diamonds, ace of diamonds. Um, so, about as good as it can get for this diamonds, hand. Ten of diamonds, ace of diamonds, ten of diamonds, five of clubs. So you flop a flush draw and a pair. Yes. Okay. So in in pretty good shape here. Um, can't ask for too much more when you when you call with that kind of junk in there. Um, so I check and she stabs for 30. So okay. This is, this is like a bet that, she, you know, the other thing is her sizings tend to follow the value of her hands. So yeah. She's got a, if she flops top set here, she's potting it. Um, if she's kind of stabbing with like kings, queens, just trying to see where we're, we'll go, it's going to be a smaller size a lot of the time. So I just played a lot of history with this player. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of felt like she wasn't especially strong here. Um, she bets the 30. The cutoff calls. Um, doesn't surprise me he calls. He loves to float and see hands and try to make moves later. Mm -hmm. He could do that with a wide variety of hands. Um, and so I figured it's a good opportunity to try to take it down here. Um, if not, I've got a lot of equity. So I make it 125. Okay, so you check raise here as a semi-bluff. So hero uh, check raises to 125. That's right. So, I mean, here's my take on this is that if you truly do think that the big blind actually bets here with like kings or queens and there's fold equity and the cutoff by over limping probably doesn't have a weak ace and just called, then sure. I mean, I would kind of like this play more if it went check, check, and then the field better bet and you could attack the sort of field better here. It's not clear to me, though, that the big blind doesn't have an ace here. I, I mean, it just seems a little bit strange for her to bet into... Uh, two people with kings or queens, but okay, I mean, maybe, and I can sort of get on board with your play. I mean, this is almost like, I mean, I'd rather have like a hand like five, six suited here, obviously too, because then you don't have to deal with the weird things that might go on if you get called and like the turn is a jack. And that's why it's sometimes better to have these sort of bottom cards being connected where you're not concerned about the straight coming in and then some of your kickers being shared. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely could be in trouble if she's got ace jack. If she's got ace king too, I, I mean, I think I can get her off of it. Um, right on the flop here? Just, not on the flop, but if with the second bet. So I think she can be scared. I have two bearers set pretty, pretty easily. Um, she knows I, or at least she thinks I play fairly loose and um, wild. So I think that might help my my case of making her think I could have. You know, I could connect on anything. Now, obviously, you have to make this play, though, with the intention of thinking that there's going to be fold equity with both players. Because if there isn't, then it's just a spew, obviously. What it, so what ends up happening? So you make it 125. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a call from her and a fold from the cutoff, and the opposite happens. She folds, and the cutoff calls. Yeah, if I expect a call from her, I don't know if I want to make this play. But okay, so the big line folds, but the cutoff calls. That's right. interesting. I mean, I, I'm saying if, if one of them called. I, I thought there's a decent chance I could get it through um, if neither of them were especially strong. So we put in 280. It's like 345 now, right? 345 in the pot. All right. Yep. And uh, turn is a three of spades. So pretty pretty clean card here. It doesn't um, improve people. Uh, well, it doesn't really connect. Yeah, it doesn't really connect with anything. Right. Right. So I don't. Yeah. I don't think that the, you know. If I make another play at it right here, I th it's. I think I've got a good shot of getting you know mediocre aces out of the pot. Yeah. This is one where it kind of shapes. Sometimes you get into these spots where you wonder if a portion of your opponent's range contains a draw as well. You're kind of in between. Like, say you had five, six of diamonds here. You might think, oh my god, I I don't want a diamond to come here, right? Because it's kind of weird that it goes call, check, raise, fold, call. Here, you know, you've got the jack high flush draw, so it's the third nut. And then when you start to think about like what, like unless he's playing up and down cards, like king six of diamonds or queen seven of diamonds, I mean, because you have the jack of diamonds in your hand, maybe he's got king nine or queen nine, there's probably more smaller diamond draws here than what you have just because of that jack blocks all the straight draws. It's, it's kind of interesting, but... I would probably continue. I mean, here's the thing: like, it just seems odd to me that he. I mean, maybe he's got a weak ace here that overlumps like ace six, and he's going to call your check raise. And then the question becomes: well, if you lay down the hammer now, would he release? Because you put in one twenty five on the flop, so it looks like you probably have like maybe 
you know, 750 left in your stack. Like if you go 300 and he calls then, or maybe you go full pot here and he calls, you just shut it down at the end. You know what I'm saying? I might, I might take one of these sizings where if he continues to call and he doesn't jam on me, I might just give up at the end. Um, what did you do? Three of spades on the turn. Ace, 10, five front door diamonds, three of spades yeah. on the turn. So I bet 250. I mean, I'm going to really put the pressure on his um, mid range hands here. Uh, you know, he could call with a 10 there. Um, he could call with a weak ace. I think he's raising any decent ace there, anything ace 10 and higher pre flop. So I don't, I don't think right. he's particularly that strong here. And I know he is very unlikely to have two pair or better. So I, you know, I put 250 in. I didn't want to make it look too bluffy by uh, betting too large, but it was, you know, a good two thirds size pot bet there. Yeah. I just wonder though, cause now I wonder if you, if, if some of these aces, these weak aces stick around. Now, if you say that the same, you're going to get the same full, that full equity from 250 as you are from say bet a full pot, then fine. But so he calls, you go three, 250 in a call. He calls again pretty quickly. Um, and so, um, you know, he didn't feel like it didn't seem like he had a big decision to make there. So he, he made the call. Um, and the river is the ace of spades. Okay. So the river is the ace of spades and the pot is 845 and you have about maybe like 500 left ish effective. And obviously this is interesting because he's never going to come off of an ace now. If it doesn't seem like you think he's going to have a 10 and I tend to agree with you. If we take out 10 X here out of his holdings. And even if he was holding down with 10, holding on with 10 X, I mean, this is sort of a live hack. He should probably be more apt to call you on the river. Cause there's less of a chance, obviously that you have, you know, ASEX, although it's weird how some live players might react to just the bet size. But, uh, if we throw out the 10 X here, then it's probably going to be other draws or an ACE that he's sort of hanging around with. Right. Yeah. So if he's, if you know, they also I block came, pocket fives too yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ace made me think he's less likely to have that ace. Of course, he should think the same thing of me um, at that point. So I'm I'm kind of in a tough spot here. I don't I have showdown value. Um, I I don't think don't, there's I don't I, I don't think it's a tough spot right now. What to do? I think there's one clear cut action yeah. right now. So I, I mean, I'm checked, but I, I've got to figure out like what what do I do if he actually you know comes right. back? And the, I mean, the the play is obviously to check here. Because I, because if, if he if he has a busted draw or trip aces, then there really is no point in betting here with a five. When you have, I don't a, think he, you have a five. I basically ruled out he's got he can't have jacks, he can't have queens, he can't have kings here. Um if he's got an ace, he's absolutely calling me. If he's got a ten, he probably calls me as well. Um and I don't think he ever gets there with something like nines, eights, or sevens or sixes. So there's there's just like he's either got a draw that's just completely busted and I'm good. Or he's got that ace, and he'll see what to do here. So, I I was pretty much ready to give up if anything. Um, if I didn't improve on this one, because if he's you know called two bet, you know check raise, he's called a bet, turn bet. He's he's got something. Um, I'm ready to shut down. And so, what does he do? He tanks for about two minutes, counting out chips. Mm -hmm. And it was it was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Where you know he was just thinking about what to do and he's counting them out. And it's not like I had, you know, enough chips behind to check raise him or do anything of uh, right. significance to it. Shouldn't have, it should not be a hard decision. Um, if he's got a good hand, mm -hmm. he's, if he's got a good hand, he's, 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 he's maybe Hollywooding for 10 seconds and shoving. Uh, but he, he keeps counting out chips and he's like debating whether he should bet or not. He's talking about maybe, maybe I have him crushed or, he just can't figure out what to do. And then finally, after about two minutes, puts out this bet of about 450. Um, I didn't ask for an exact count, but I saw, you know, about a stack of, of green and they threw a couple red chips in there too. It was a really, really strange bet. So he he almost puts you all in, but not quite. Just, just about. It, it, it would have been really close either right. way. So it looks like the pot's right around 1300 and it's 450 for you to call. So you're getting just under three to one. I mean, we can talk about a couple things, different things going on here at the end. I mean, what's going on against you, of course, is that you have the jack of diamonds in your hand, which I think is a lot of those draws, as we talked about. Now, if he's more apt to over limp with up and down suited cards, he can have some more busted flush draws like 
king seven of diamonds, you know, queen seven of diamonds, something like that. If he wasn't playing those hands, though, it's really bad for you to have the jack of diamonds here because you block all those flush draw, um, straight draw combos that continue. Um, the other interesting thing here, though, is, is that if he raises a big ace pre, does he bet with just an ace here, like a seven for 450? And I'm kind of getting the inclination that that's really probably not i don't know if he's betting like that and especially with your whole thing with you know why is he taking so long like is he really thinking about ace eight ace nine for 450 it kind of sounds to me like this is the type of guy that might check that back or not bet that large right so it is it's it, it's one of these spots where you know you didn't you check race flop and you bet the turn but we can get into situations where if we sort of picture this if we're the villain and let's say that you check raise the turn instead of you check raise the flop and the villain has like a six and the villain maybe bet the turn and you check raised and the villain called and now on the river you checked a lot of people's instinct when they're the villain with a six in that spot in position is to bet they have trips but really the play is to check behind because they're either beat or you busted a draw and there's no point in betting so this is kind of similar here where if he has a weak ace and you and he thought that you had a draw this whole time. The fact that the ace comes at the end doesn't really do anything besides make it so that you bust it out on your draw. And but there are some live players that just will just they don't go that extra step and they don't put that together. So it's pretty close. I mean, I could get on board here with the call getting three to one if you don't think um, a weak ace bats and this whole like kind of show that this guy put on here at the end. Yeah, I just I just did not think he had that. You know, there's not that many aces he can have where he would have just limped and played that way. I, I mean, I can't think of too many here. There's no, you know, the ace five suited, the ace ten suited. There's just not that many combos of. He's going to mm -hmm. do it with a with a boat. If he's got tens here, that's that's maybe like the only thing. Is he going to slow play it that much when all those, you know? The, I mean, I would think that he would there, raise. But... 10s pre if he's going to raise ace 10 but i mean the other thing that you've got going on here is that you're blocking the boats i mean he could have ace three right i mean he could run into ace three but you block i mean what alan is saying here is that if the dude raises preflop with ace 10 and pocket tens and alan has a five in his hand there's just not that many combos of boats here if he's not betting uh, a weak ace at the end you're sort of left with like ace three only so he's getting three to one so the question is, is that can we find a bluff here one out of four times? And it doesn't seem like it's that out of the realm of possibility. Again, going back to the fact that I hate the fact that we have the Jack of Diamonds in our hand. But if he's playing up and down suited cards, then um, then he can have it. Did you call? Uh, yeah. So while he was tanking, uh, I, I pretty much decided I was going to call any bet. Mm -hmm. um, so as soon as he put the bet in, I flipped the chip in and, and, and he had queen four of diamonds. There you go. Queen, so he has up and down suited cards. I mean, I think that that's important to note too with the with the hand reading, right? Like it's over. See, this was a cool call, guys. In the live chat, we're like, oh, this call is not going to make YouTube because of the whole pre flop thing, Alan. They just immediately <laughs> dismissed it. <laughs> Everyone says pre flop, pre flop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, if he's going to be playing up and down suited cards, then obviously he's going to have more combos of um, things. That is something that uh, another, that actually makes sense, is which is like an up and down sort of hand that turns a wheel draw i mean it would only be really like king four king two of diamonds uh queen four and diamonds something like that that makes it sort of stick around you know on the turn um and then maybe maybe once in a great while the guy paired a three and he knows he's no good and he, and he decides to do it you know usually people don't turn hands into bluffs but you know that could be that too like a queen three kind of equivalent type of, of thing but uh interesting little spot thank you very much for the call alan appreciate it